Hi everyone. Today we're going to talk about two concepts of relations. First of all, graphs of relations or visual representations and symmetry or symmetric relations. Recall that a relation is a set of ordered pairs. So here are two symbolic representations of relations. The relation S, again re represented strictly in symbols, is a set of ordered pairs. In this case, the relation S is the set 3, 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 3, and 4, 5. So S can, is, consists of these five elements. The relation T, on the other hand, is an infinite relation. T is the set of all points x, y, where x comes through, is a real number and y is a real number, such that 1 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to y, and 1 is less than or equal to y, which is less than 2. So again, it's represented symbolically, where, but s is a finite, but t, on the other hand, is an infinite relation, is an infinite number of elements in this relation. The, these bottom two graphs are just two visual representations of relations. The set of all the points on these blue curves, their ordered pairs, would be the elements in the relation. Okay. Relations can be expressed symbolically, but like many mathematical topics, they can better be understood with visual represent representations. In other words, by graphing the, the relations, you get a better understanding of them. There are two common ways to represent relations visually. The first is a Cartesian graph, which is sort of a traditional XY graph that you, that you use with lines and, and so forth and other functions. In this case, we're going to graph the relation S, which again com is composed of five ordered pairs, five elements. So the relation, the uh, element 3, 1, is represented by there you go. There is represented by the point at 3, 1. We've got 2, 3, 3, 4. So 2, 3, 3, 4, sorry. 4, 3, and 4, 5. So your relation is composed of those five points on a Cartesian axis. The other way to represent relations is with something called a directed graph, or as some people call it, the shorthand is a die for directed, a die graph. In this case, the, the points in the domain and range are given by these boxes. So our domains and ranges, we have the numbers 1 through 5. And the arrows from 3 to 1, for example, means that 3 that element 3 is related to element 1. We've got 2 is related to 3 because 2, 3 is in the relation. So again, if 3 is related to 1, that says that 3, 1 is in your relation. 4 is related to 5. Now, look at these two elements. You've got 3, 4, and 4, 3. So 3 is related to 4. 4 is related to 3. So together, the way you represent those is just using a double-headed arrow. Just a quick historical note before we move on. The Cartesian, the Cartesian coordinate system that we're also familiar with was actually developed by a man named René Descartes, a French mathematician. Um, he's credited with, among other things, developing the Cartesian coordinate system, which was vital in the development of mathematics because it allowed mathematicians to visualize points in space which allowed, which allowed them to visualize algebraic expressions as geometric shapes in two and three dimensions. But anyways, Descartes is the, is the namesake of the Cartesian coordinate system. Let's look at another example of visualizing relations. In this case, the infinite relation T, which we, which we discussed briefly earlier. Again, in this relation, and I'll go to a different screen. There you go, different color rather. X comes from the point, or comes from the real numbers. Y also comes from the real numbers, where X is between 1 and 4. Y is between 1 and 2, but not inclusive of 2. So like you do with, with other graphing inequalities, so X is between 1 and 
4, so you would include the boundary points, but y goes from 2, from 1 to 2, but does not include 2. So notice here the endpoints are hollow circles, meaning they're not included, and y equals 2 is a dashed line, meaning it's not included. In this case, there's an infinite number of points, actually an uncountably infinite number of points in this relation, so no directed graph is possible. You just couldn't graph all the nodes, the, the points that you'd need, because there's an infinite number. Graphs can also be used for values that are not um, numeric. In this case, we've got the relation S, which is consists of an ordered pairs of letters. To, to determine what the Cartesian graph would look like, you have to find your domain and your range. So your domain in this case is the set of first elements. D is going to be, we've got A's, we've got B's, and we've got C's. Your range in this case is the set of second elements, A's, B's, and C's as well. So your Cartesian graph, the domain is the horizontal axis, the range being the vertical axis. So the domain consists of A's, B's, and C's, the range A's, B's, and C's. So then you just graph the points. A is related to A, so the point A, A is on your relation. A is to B, A is to C, B is to C, and C is to B. Here's a directed graph of the same relation S. A is related to B, A is related to C, and a new, a new feature is that A is related to A. So that, the way you represent that is just with, a, with an arrow or a loop from A to itself. Actually, you don't need both of these arrows on the ends. One of them will do. And then, again, B is related to C, and C is related to B, so those two would be connected with a double-headed arrow. Okay. So those are graphs of relations. Oh, sorry. Now let's talk about another topic, symmetric relations. I'm going to give you two definitions of symmetric relations. The first one says that a relation R is symmetric if and only if, now look at the structure of this, this conditional statement is true. So relation R is symmetric if and only if, if xy is in R, then yx is also in R. So in other words, if the relation contains 1, 2, if it's symmetric, it better also contain the point 2, 1. If xy is in R, then yx is also in the relation. The other way to think of a relation is you have to define it in terms of what's called an inverse relation, which, as you'll learn, is related to inverse functions. In this case, we've got the relation, and the relation, our relation goes from A to B. So the first elements come from a set A, the second elements come from a set B. The inverse of the relation R, which we'll call R inverse, is a set of all points y, x. Now notice what's happened here. y, the first element, comes from b. The second element comes from a. So it reverses, it flip-flops. with Instead of being from a to b, this is from b to a. So y, x is in the inverse if x, y is in the relation. Okay, so in other words, if the point let's say 3, 4 is an element of the relation R, then what we know is that the point 4, 3 is an element of the relation R inverse. So that leads to the second definition of, sym of symmetry. A relation R is symmetric if and only if the inverse of a function of a relation and the relation itself are equal. Now keep in mind these are both sets. So if these are equal sets, then the relation is symmetric, which means they must contain exactly the same elements. So if relation 2, 1 is in R, then we know that 2, 1 better also be in R inverse.
But keep in mind, if 2, 1 is in R, then we know that 1, 2 is in R inverse, but because they're equal, that says that 1, 2 must also be an element of R. Okay, so looking at just a couple examples. These are examples from page 115 of the Fletcher and Patty book. Problem 20A says that I'm going to give you the set A, you have the set A, and the relation R is a relation from A to B, from A to A rather, and again this is called a relation, a relation on A. If if the first element is from A and the second element is from A, it's a relation from A to A. So it's a relation on A is what it's called. So the relation R says that AB is in our relation if A divides B. So let's first get the points, okay? So identify the points, the elements of the relation. 1 divides 1, so 1, 1 is in our relation. 1 divides 2, and 1 divides 3, 4, and 5. So those 5 points are on our relation. 2 divides 2, and 2 divides 4. So those 2 points are also in our relation. 3 divides 3, but 3 doesn't divide anything else. 4 divides 4, and 5 divides 5. So there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 points, 10 elements in our relation. Here is a directed graph. 1 is related to 3, 1 is related to 1, 3 is related to 3, 2 to 2, 5 to 5. So this directed graph represents that relation visually. We can also represent that relation with a, um, with a Cartesian graph. And again, here are the, the 10 points, and the, those, uh, those points are graphed here on our Cartesian graph. Now, the question is, and this is problem 21, is this relation symmetric? Now, we really could do that in one of two ways. If it's symmetric, going back to the directed graph, if 1, 3 is in our relation, then we better have 3, 1. Sorry, let me go back to my pen. If 1, 3 is in our relation, then 3, 1 better be in our relation. But in this case, it's not. So a symmetric graph in a directed graph, so a symmetric directed graph, all of these arrows have to be double-headed arrows. In this case, they're not, so it's not symmetric. The other way to think of a, of a symmetric graph if we go back to one of the definitions, and the definition that says if xy is in our relation, then yx must also be in our relation. That's the very first definition. So in this case, if 3, 1, or 1, 3 is in our relation, then 3, 1 had better be in our relation, which is not. If 2, 4 is in our relation, then 4, 2 better be in our relation which again it's not. So we know it's not symmetric. Now here's a way to test, sort of like a, a, a line test for functions. A symmetric relation, if you draw the line y equals x, a, a symmetric relation is going to be symmetric over this line y equals x. So whatever is on the top side had it better also be on the bottom side. Now, as you know, I love definitions. Let's look at this definition as well, because this is a definition. R is symmetric if and only if, if, okay, that's a lot of ifs, but that's the way it is. If xy is in the relation, then yx also has to be in the relation. So, if we negate that definition, R is not symmetric if and only if, What's the negation of if P then Q? It would be P and not Q. If XY is in the relation and YX is not in the relation. So in this case we can say we can say it's not 
a symmetric relation because th 1, 3 is in the relation and 3, 1 is not in the relation. So, because I can find an x, y, and r such that, or where y, x is not an element of r, we know that this relation r is not symmetric. Two other quick graphs before I uh, stop this video. Is this relation, again, it's an infinite relation, is that symmetric? Well, by the visual line test, you can see it's not. But you could also see that by just plotting a few points. Here's a point that is on our relation. What is this? 2, 4 is on our relation, but 4, 2 is not on our relation, so it's not. On the other hand, the circle, or again, x, the circle is a set of all points x, y from the reals cross the reals, where x squared plus y squared equals 4, so it's a circle with radius 4. Notice again, that's an important point. A relation doesn't need to be a function. In fact, it, it often isn't. Is C symmetric? In this case, it is. If x, y is in our relation, then that would say that x squared plus y squared equals 4. So, if x, y is in our relation, is y, x in our relation? Well, if x squared plus y squared equals 4, then um, y squared plus x squared equals 4. Well, that, that's still true. So, any point that is on a relation x, y, so say 0, 2 is on there, and then 2, 0 is also on there. So this is a symmetric relation.